Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, <clears throat> we'll give you a, a full report and we'll hold your questions till we get to the end and we'll probably answer most of them as we go along. John Quirillo, <coughs> meteorologist. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Irma made landfall at 9:10 this morning along the lower Florida Keys as a Category 4 hurricane. As of 1 p.m., Irma was approaching the southwest Florida coast, still with winds of a 130 miles per hour. Uh, in terms of the forecast, there's little change uh, in terms of the overall forecast track, with Irma still expected to track along the west coast of Florida uh, through tonight, then across southwest Georgia on Monday. The tropical storm force winds currently extend about 190 miles northeast of the center of the storm. And those wind fields are actually expected to expand as the storm moves to the north, um, reaching maybe as far out as 270 miles to the northeast of the center of the storm uh, as it moves into southwest Georgia. That's because of this expanding wind field uh, that we're going to have some impacts here in the state of South Carolina, despite the storm being a good distance away. Uh, for the impacts, uh, in terms of coastal flooding and storm surge, we're already seeing strong northeast winds maintaining elevated water levels, and that's going to support moderate to major coastal flooding along the southern and central coast and minor flooding along the northern coast at times of high tide today and tonight. Life-threatening storm surge inundation is expected along the central and southern coast Monday, especially between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., when inundation values of up to four to six feet above typically dry ground could occur. A storm surge warning is therefore in effect from Charleston County South. Non-life threatening inundation up to three feet is expected for the northern portion of the coast Monday and Monday night. Storm surge inundation and rough surf could damage coastal properties, roads and dunes and severe beach erosion could occur. For the winds, tropical storm force wind gusts are expected to develop tonight and persist through Tuesday across much of the state. With the strongest winds south and west of I-26 and near the coast, where wind gusts up to about 65 miles per hour could occur, and tropical storm and high wind warnings uh, will take effect uh, due to those winds. Across central and southern portions of the state, a flash flood watch is now in effect for three to six inches of rainfall with isolated amounts up to eight inch possible, and two to four inches of rain is expected elsewhere to the north. Uh, these rainfall totals are down just a bit, and uh, because of that, only minor river flooding is now expected later in the week, mainly on the Santee River near Jamestown. And there's also the threat for isolated tornadoes, and that would be more of a concern Monday and Monday night. And that's all I have, Governor. Thank you. So as you heard, of those barrier islands, uh, nothing has changed. We still have the evacuation orders in effect. And there will be high winds, there will be a lot of rain uh, all over the state, depending where you're, where you're located. And also, of course, we, we don't expect the storm to change. It always could. We're not expecting it to. But we know we're going to have rains, a lot of water, and we're going to have some, some high winds, particularly uh, on the coast in those uh, the three counties that we mentioned earlier. That is Jasper, Colleton, and Beaufort. Uh, the, team uh, today consists, we've been giving you account of the officers and personnel uh, on board in various places uh, at this station. Uh, as of right now, we have 579 National Guardsmen on duty. We have 100 troopers assisting lo uh, local law enforcement. Of course, you have all your county law enforcement, county and city law enforcement out. <laughs> We have 89 state guardsmen on duty. We have 121 SLED, probation, pardon, and parole, and Department of Natural Resources agents on duty. We have seven, excuse me, 11 shelters open, and 264 <coughs> evacuees are in those shelters as of noon today. Our total open shelters capacity is 7,000. 127 so we have plenty of room including plenty of room for our friends coming up from georgia and florida although as mentioned yesterday the the upper coast of south carolina uh, is is fairly clear and they are they are have plenty of hotel rooms in various parts of the state flooding in wind as you can tell this is a serious storm uh, fortunately, it's not hitting us like we thought it might, but it is still hitting us and it will hit hard. And you can see on the video monitor, we don't have the winds up there now. Well, yes, they are. You see, they're all over the state and they go and uh, th this, this is as of uh, now. They're going to be higher than that 
and you see there they're up to 54, 55 miles an hour down on the lower the South Carolina coast and uh, they go all across the state and of course they will go higher as, as we go forward. They will extend well into South Carolina from the center of the storm which is very very wide and on Monday from 10 to 4 we could experience 60 mile an hour winds in the low country and maybe even more with that storm surge again of four to six feet and that's four to six feet above dry ground which is a lot of water and that water is not just stationary it's moving at a high rate of speed so it's something that we do need to get out of the way of. Uh, President Trump called me this morning uh, he was calling from Camp David I thanked him for approving our request for federal disaster assistance which was done in just a few hours a few days ago uh, he said he's with us he assured me that he was willing to do anything that we needed to, to help the people of South Carolina. As for evacuations, the state and local law enforcement officers, along with the armed National Guardsmen, will be patrolling the evacuated barrier islands. We're not going to leave those evacuated barrier islands open to thieves and people who would want to go in to cause trouble. So let me make it perfectly clear. We have absolutely no tolerance no tolerance for those who would try to take advantage of this storm for any sort of personal game, gain or thievery. Looters, thieves, mischief makers of any kind will be arrested on site. We'll have personnel there, armed personnel there, and they will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. We don't want any of that to happen in South Carolina. State parks, the Hunting Island State Park and Edisto Beach State Park have been closed indefinitely for the evacuations. Charlestown Landing in Charleston will be closed today in anticipation of the possible flooding. School and government closings, as you know, the numerous school and government closings set for Monday. 20 counties have school districts that will close on Monday. That is up to them to decide. 11 county governments will be closed on Monday. There may be more, and that can be the list can be found at scmd.org. Org. Fuel. We touched on this yesterday. The big stations are okay. They have contracts to have fuel brought to them. The others have fuel brought to them when it is in a when it is available. But uh, we do have some shortages. We do have some outages. But there's always fuel. If it's not at this exit. Uh, at the other station at this particular exit, whatever exit that may be, just go to the next one. You'll be able to, to have fuel. So we, we're not running out of fuel. And that's my report for right now. And we'll proceed on with Kim Stinson, uh, Director of Emergency Management Division. Stinson. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the, uh, here at the State Emergency Operations Center, uh, our two priorities right now, number one is evacuation and sheltering operations, as the governor talked about. Also for planning for response operations and damage assessment over the next uh, several days. And we're prepared to help the counties with their damage assessment uh, should they need it. We have EMD personnel that are embedded in Beaufort, uh, Charleston, Colleton, and Jasper to uh, coordinate operations as we proceed. We have other personnel on standby uh, as needed. We're actively supporting county requests uh, for support uh, ranging from generators to sandbags. We've had 131 requests so far, and we've uh, completed or they're actively in operation right now 110 of those requests. We've got ca uh, 18 county emergency operation center that are currently operational in, in, some, in some form. Uh, also remind uh, citizens uh, to call our emergency hotline if you have questions, uh, and that's at one 866 Two four six zero one three three, and it's also on that board up there. And as the governor said, uh, go to scemd.org for disaster information. And besides the closings, there's a lot of other good information that links to other uh, other services. Sir, thank you, General Livingston, National Guard. Thank you, Governor. Uh, as the governor mentioned, uh, we are now in position to support our partner agencies and the counties. Uh, with uh, search and rescue, uh, evacuation, and security operations of uh, pre-storm, post-storm, uh, with those three operations along with uh, 
route clearance operations uh, with South Carolina DOT. Uh, you're also seeing uh, some military movement through South Carolina to support our uh, partners down in Georgia and Florida. Uh, we have quite a few uh, helicopters that are, are stopping here in South Carolina, being refueled and headed down along with the uh, military convoys. Uh, we are sending an infantry battalion along with a transportation company, about 650 uh, troops at this point to assist our partners down in uh, Florida. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Sled, Chief Keel. As the Governor said, uh, there will be no tolerance for folks trying to take advantage of those areas that have been evacuated. We have 121 uh, state police officers and National Guardsmen that are patrolling those areas with local law enforcement. Those patrols in those areas will continue until a reentry, until the folks who left those areas are able to come back to them. So again, we want to make sure and send that warning out to anybody trying to take advantage of those individuals who's left. Uh, those patrols will be there and they will be keeping an eye on your property and security of those areas. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Secretary Hall, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. <coughs> traffic is flowing very well across the state today. Most of our traffic levels have returned to pre-storm conditions, if not actually lower than normal traffic volumes. The only exception to that is I-20 coming in from the Augusta area. We are seeing some elevated numbers on I-20, but even with those numbers, it's flowing very well. Uh, the US-17 at the Georgia border, that bridge has been closed by Georgia DOT as part of their normal storm protocol uh, due to the, the uh, winds in the area. We're expecting to potentially have to close some of the movable bridges along the coast sometime today once the winds achieve 25 miles per hour or more sustained. We're keeping an eye on the high level bridges. That would be the Ravenel Bridge and some others along the coast. And decisions will be made if and when to close those bridges in coordination with local governments. Uh, we urge caution driving across the state today with these wind gusts that are coming through the area uh, just due to the unpredictability of it. So please be careful on the highways. Thank you. Rex Smith, public safety. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. We have shifted from our lane reversal and uh, evacuation efforts, and uh, now we have uh, asked the National Guard to uh, maintain those 15 records because uh, we will need those for a cl quick clearance for uh, the uh, return of the uh, out-of-state travelers. Also, uh, we're prepared to uh, assist SLED and ESF-13 with uh, recovery, response, and security mission efforts uh, should those uh, calls come to our uh, Quest. And thirdly, uh, as stated earlier, uh, we are preparing for an influx of uh, traffic returning back to uh, uh, the various locations. Uh, we've seen an in increase in traffic from Georgia and Florida. Uh, we were sure that the same uh, out-of-state travelers that we saw pre-landfall, uh, more likely we would see those same travelers uh, post-landfall. So we are planning uh, for that influx of traffic returning. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Director Smith. Director Alvin Taylor, DNR, please. Uh, thank you, Governor. As with all other state law enforcement, we're assisting ESF-13 and SLED for security missions, especially in our coastal region. We're also monitoring rainfall during this period in case we have unusual or high amounts of rain in some areas so we can monitor our rivers for any possibility of floods so we can assist in those areas with our officers. We are not expecting that, but we're monitoring it. We're also very busy along the coast with looking at the surge models to make sure that any way we can help with our boating capacity in our, in our area that we can help citizens there. We'll also be patrolling the Berry Islands by boat, by water, and also providing last minute evacuation where possible. That's all I have, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Jones, Fire Marshal, please. Thank you, Governor. Yes, our state's fire and rescue resources remain in a state of readiness and are leaning forward and ready to uh, respond to any requests for assistance locally. Um, we have not received any request for assistance from local jurisdictions. I've personally uh, spoken with several fire chiefs from coastal and low-lying areas uh, to ensure that they have no unmet needs. Um, our community, once our communities are in the clear, we will be assessing our ability to respond and assist our neighbors in Georgia and Florida with research and rescue assets. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Alan Wilson, Attorney General. 
Um, relatively pleased um, as it relates to price gouging. Um, to date, we have 250 complaints of price gouging in the state that have been logged with our office. That is considerably less than in previous disasters and evacuations. Um, 85 percent still remains with fuel, with uh, about the last 10 percent being um, water and the, and the remainder being uh, lodging and other materiel. Um, if you witness something you believe to be price gouging, you can contact our office at scag.gov, scag.gov, and you can fill out a form there or you can email us at pricegouging at scag.gov. If you don't have internet or don't have the ability to get to it, you can call 803-737-3953. All of these will be investigated after the event has occurred and our partner or neighboring states have uh, gone through this event, we will be investigating these after this week, but probably not during the event. Thank you. Thank you. Q. Weathers, Commissioner of Agriculture. Thank you, Governor. I'll yes, give sir. two reports, one on behalf of agriculture. Uh, this is September. Thank goodness it's not October. As we've gone through these rain events before, right at the heart of harvest season, it's been quite impactful. Right now, uh, farmers are working hard to get those crops out of the field that are ready and are very appreciative of the waiver to allow the um, oversized and overweight loads to move to market. That's very helpful. Uh, farmers have been through this before, so our drainage and whatnot uh, that farmers have prepared in their fields should allow for the six to eight inches of rain in parts of the state to be handled more easily. On the other side, to help the gasoline uh, supply issue, the department has issued a waiver on basically allowing summertime gasoline to go into the fall. Normally Labor Day is the cutoff for that, so that summertime uh, gasoline will be used through uh, October 31st. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Commissioner. Department of Social Services, Joan Meacham. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. DSS has been working overtime around the clock to support the shelter operations in the state. We'd like to uh, thank our partners in this effort, particularly the American Red Cross, the Salvation Army, the Guard, and of course, law enforcement. As of 2 p.m., we currently have 11 shelters and the Anderson Civic Center open. Yesterday, we had three shelters open, Colleton County Middle School in Colleton County, Richland High School in Jasper County, and Dent Middle School in Richland County. The overnight capacity was just under 250 in all three of those shelters combined. The following shelters have opened today. Bluffton High School in Beaufort County opened at 9 a.m. Battery Creek High School in Beaufort County opened at 9 a.m. Orangeburg Wilkinson High School in Orangeburg County opened at 10 a.m. Lake Marion High School in Orangeburg County opened at 10 a.m. Hunter Connor Tyler Elementary opened in Orangeburg County at 10 a.m. Branchville High School in Orangeburg County opened at 10 a.m. Richard Carroll Elementary School in Bamberg County opened at noon. The Anderson Civic Center in Anderson County opened at noon. That This is to support our operations of evacuees arriving from Georgia and anyone else that needs to be sheltered. And in Charleston County at 1 p.m., the Coastal Pre-Release Center opened. This brings our current open capacity to over 7,000. We also have an additional 11 shelters that plan on opening late this afternoon. Kings Tree Senior High East Campus in Williamsburg County is scheduled to open at 3 p.m. C.E. Murray High School in Williamsburg County is scheduled to open at 3 p.m. Hemingway High School in Williamsburg County is scheduled to open at 3 p.m. D.P. Cooper School in Williamsburg County is scheduled to open at 3 p.m. Manning High School in Clarendon County is scheduled to open at 3 p.m. East Clarendon High School in Clarendon County is scheduled to open at 3 p.m. 
Scott's Branch High School in Clarendon County is scheduled to open at 3 p.m. Allendale Elementary School in Allendale County is scheduled to open at 4 p.m. Camden High School in Kershaw County is scheduled to open at 5 p.m. Crestwood High School in Sumter County is scheduled to open at 5 p.m. Calhoun County High School in Calhoun County is scheduled to open at 5 p.m. So by the end of the day today, we'll have a total of 23 shelters open with a capacity, uh, eligible capacity of over 13,000. This is a moving target with changes every minute. Please check with SEMD.org. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Duke Scott, Office of Regulatory Staff. Um, thank you, Governor. On the fuel issue, the uh, Governor has mentioned that the brand stations do have fuel. There have been issues with deliveries. Uh, we have coordinated now with DOT and Department of Public Safety so that if, if, if there's a delivery issue, um, they can contact and they, and they got our contact number. We, we reached out to the marketers. They got our contact number. We, uh, they'll contact us. We'll work with DOT as far as the routes concerned and Department of Public Safety as far as getting the trucks there. The, the, big, the big issue with the branding station is, of course, getting the deliveries there because, because of, the, of, the, of the traffic. But we've, we've got that coordinated effort going on. On the, on the electric provider's side, we, uh, the electric providers have been active um, recruiting crews, um, making sure they have the proper equipment, uh, proper uh, uh, the transformers and, and, and those types of things. If, of course, if you see a down power line, don't go near it uh, because you, if you see a down line, don't go near it because you don't know whether it's a power line or, or a telephone line or what it is. So you need to stay away from any down um, lines. Electric utilities, uh, because of the change that we've had of actually going to releasing some crews to help our neighbors in Georgia, some of the out-of-state crews that they've had. Governor, that's my report. Okay. Thank you very much. David Wilson, DHEC, please. Thank you, Governor. Sure. Um, I would like to note that all uh, regulated uh, health facilities, inpatient health facilities in the counties of Jasper, Colleton, and Beaufort that were subject to the mandatory medical evacuation have evacuated or either been approved to uh, maintain patients in shelter. Uh, second, I'd like to note that uh, in addition to notifying regulated dam owners across the state of the governor's executive order to lower water levels in cooperation with their downstream neighbors, uh, we have now done pre-storm inspections or assessments of over 91 priority dams across the state. Finally, uh, to help our clients for our county health facilities or clinics, uh, we have activated our care line uh, that clients can call to get information on closures and what other clinics are open that they can uh, go to or reschedule their appointments. And that number is 1-800-868-0404. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Willie Nunn from FEMA. Uh, thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Uh, we continue to be embedded here with the EOC, uh, with my staff, and at every time that the uh, state, uh, any of the state partners, uh, they have requirements as they re support the mandatory evacuation, sheltering, uh, any equipment needs that they have, it's our job to make sure that the, if they need help that we get it to them, and that's why we're here. Also, uh, we continue to stress, as the governor does, if it follows your local and your state guidance for this, and we're here to support. Thank you. Governor. Thank you very much. And also for the uh, county governments and others uh, out there, Director Brian Sterling at the Department of Corrections says they have filled 54,500 sandbags and they have plenty of them left. About 11,500 have been distributed. So and especially in those areas where we're going to have some severe flooding, if you need sandbags, they are available. Now we'll be glad to answer questions. Any questions? Governor, do you know uh, how many uh, folks remain on in the evacuated zones, and, and, and what is your message for uh, any folks that do remain at this point? Yeah, there are some. There are some remaining. We have some of those numbers, but 
of course, uh, as they say, you can take a horse to water, but you, you can't make him drink. And it's dangerous with the high winds and with the flooding. Uh, it is it's a dangerous situation. And what we'd say to everyone is the reason we issued that evacuation order is it was the combined professional judgment of everybody on this team that we should issue that evacuation order. And that means to get on out of there. And I would say it's not too late to go and it's time. Governor, what worries you most right now? Well, with when you have flooding and you have winds, uh, you, you have a great potential for people getting hurt, people and, and animals, and of course property being destroyed anytime you have something like this. Uh, nature is powerful, and if you've seen those photographs and the films down south, you realize how powerful, sometimes we forget how powerful it is. But uh, everybody remembers uh, Matthew, this, this will be likely in some spots will be as, as, uh, as damaging as Hurricane Matthew. It's not something to be taken lightly. So I, I guess the main thing we worried about is, is the safety of, of the people. That's our main concern. Well, here in the Midlands, what can people expect to see or where are we most vulnerable? They can see a lot of rain and a lot of wind and uh, they need to need to get ready for it. And uh, always this, this is a, it's a hurricane. It's not coming right at us, but it is going to give us very strong winds and you see again you see the the tapes of things flying around in the air at these places that have winds some, some of which are about what we're going to expect here right now and you can get hurt and it's it's a dangerous situation anytime you have high winds anytime you have a lot of rain you have people on the roads you have uh, children, you have vulnerable people. Uh, it, it's a dangerous situation. More questions. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the uh, director of DDSN spending last week on a Caribbean cruise? Well, we will analyze and study all such things at a later date. Right now, what we want to do is be sure that the people understand that there is a dangerous storm coming. It's known as a hurricane. And it's not gonna hit us directly, but it's gonna hit us. And we've got to take care. And you don't get a second chance at these things. Once, once one of your loved ones uh, gets hit, or, or steps on a live wire, or gets hit by something flying through the air, or slips and falls, or runs off the road because of the rain and they're not paying attention, you can't rewind that and do it again. So we urge people to use a little bit, use common sense, use good judgment, and be safe. Take care of yourselves. And in, some, in these areas, when the wind is blowing hard and the water is flowing in deep, we can't come get you. There, there's a time when you are purely on your own. Any more? Yeah, you mentioned lane reversals. I wasn't clear on when or where that was happening. It's not going to happen unless uh, locally in Beaufort County that it's determined there are two roads leading out there. They could still be reversed, but uh, it looks like not at this time. As uh, Ms. Hall said, the traffic flow seems to be uh, okay. Slight. 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 Light. Light traffic. Very light traffic, Governor. Thank you. <laughs> light traffic. Okay. And when would they reopen these areas? Do you know how long this evacuation is? Whenever, when it's safe to do so. No prediction at this time. Yes, sir. Regarding the influx of traffic of people returning home afterward, when should drivers expect to see more traffic on the roadways and what are some of the worst areas? We, we'll, re we'll report that. Uh, that's a moving target, as they say, just like what we're doing now. We, we don't know exactly what is going to hit us, but we know we're going to get hit. Uh, we, but we'll have plenty of information, recommendations, and instructions for those returning home. Thank you. Uh, Any more? Having you know everyone together and really uh, it seems like everyone's keen and focused on the evacuating and making sure that we're planning ahead for these uh, shelters. And um, as it stands now, are you are you satisfied with you know all of the efforts? Or is there anything that you might need people to pay attention to? You know, uh, we, I think I can speak for all of us. We're very satisfied with the level of cooperation we've had. Uh, as I mentioned before and others have said, we really have a great team. I, I don't think that you can find a more professional, experienced team uh, uh, collaborating and working together than you right, have right here with this 
Team South Carolina. It's uh, it's uh, quite uh, quite an organization and, and quite an enterprise. The one thing that, that I think we're all a little concerned about is some of the people who are not taking our recommendation to leave. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Always better. And as I say, you, you can't undo the harm that, that happens to you or your loved one. You just can't undo it and people will be struggling with the rest of their life wishing if only this or if only that. So get out now while you can and avoid all that. Any more questions? Governor, I think we heard we're sending about 650 troops to Florida to assist with their situation down there. What are we sending in the way of manpower for utility workers and so forth? I'll ask the General and who, who Duke. 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 What? Dukes? About what kind of work? Utility workers? Yes, sir. Uh, utility workers are under the control mainly of the Southeastern Compact among the different utility companies. So they will be sending them uh, based on cooperative agreements between the different utilities. And so you'll, you'll get a flood of uh, utility companies headed to uh, Florida and Georgia. Uh, and, and then we will stand by to assist with any state agency's request. And we, we've had uh, communications with a number of the power companies and they are all aware of how it's important to, to share those resources as, just as we share with others, they'll be shared with us when the time comes. And, and what you're seeing now is that the, they, they have a conference call on a daily basis and they determine who needs the utility crews the most and uh, they're already starting to move out of South Carolina as uh, uh, Mr. Scott said uh, to uh, Florida and Georgia. How many are moving out of South Carolina at this point? Uh, we do not. Thank you. But your MP unit is already gone. Yes, our MPs are already deployed, and our infantry unit is uh, deploying uh, probably on Tuesday. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.